Hey, welcome back. We're going on to activity three, which is discussing the cross-cutting concept of patterns. Now I know patterns is a word that we've heard a fair amount before in this unit because we've looked at patterns of waves. So now we're going to look at some patterns that we might have seen in the reading or in, an, in some other places. So we've noticed patterns as we've been studying sounds. So I want you to think about this for a second. What are some patterns that we've already observed and discussed? And why might it be useful for scientists to look for patterns in sound? I want you to pause the video, maybe just write down a couple ideas that you have or share with somebody in your house what are some patterns that you noticed? Some things that repeat, that are constant, that we see happening over and over. When you're ready, come back. Now, you might have talked about, like, I've seen patterns in sound waves. I've seen a lot of patterns in sound waves. Like when we played a certain sound in the simulator, it always seemed to be the same pattern of waves, both in the waveform and in how the particles moved. Like that's a pattern I've noticed a lot. So let's actually look back at the reading. We're gonna look at a photo that was on page 10. And I want you to think about what pattern do you observe on the screen? Now that waveform, remember, shows a pure tone. That's a sound with a constant pitch. It's the same pitch the whole time. And how does that connect to the pattern that we see on the screen? Well, a constant pitch has the same wavelength. And I see the same wavelength and actually the same amplitude. So the pattern I see is that all the waves look the same, which makes sense because the sound stays the same. Now you're going to imagine what a pure tone sounds like based on the visual representation. So I want you to think in your brain, like what would this sound sound like? So now play the sound in your brain and maybe even make the sound out loud. If I'm gonna make this sound, I might make a sound like hmm, where it's the same sound the whole time. Now let's look back actually at page 13 too. We pronounced three different words, vein, the ones inside your arm, vein, like a weather vein or wind vein, and vein, where you care a lot about your looks. So what do you observe? Now, I observe the same thing that we saw in reading is that those sounds, those words sound a lot alike and the sound patterns look really similar. So that's another pattern. If a sound is similar, I wonder if the visual representation will always be similar. It also makes me wonder, like I said in the video, what would a word that sounds totally different look like? And again, just thinking about the book and thinking about some patterns in sound waves, I wonder what ideas that you have right now. We're not gonna talk about them quite yet, but I want you to keep these, <clears throat> excuse me, in your brain as we keep working towards explaining how does a baby dolphin, how does a dolphin calf recognize his mother's unique call? Now, the last question I have for you today is based on what you read today, why do you think it might be helpful for people to compare patterns and sound waves? I want you to pause the video, either share this with somebody in your house, your answer to this question, or write this down, and when you're ready, come back. So my answer is that scientists, audiologists, doctors, and sound engineers all look at patterns and waveforms and other visual representations of sound to help them make sense of sound and do their work. Like an audiologist looks at sound visualizations to understand how well a person can hear in either ear. And that's the same thing that we've been doing. We are literally doing the same work that a lot of scientists, audiologists, doctors, and sound engineers are doing, which is pretty cool to me. That's our lesson for today, and I'll see you in your next lesson for chapter three, lesson five. Have a great day.